Please be seated. Just a quick explanation of the song. The song belonged to one of our elders. She's gone now. Her name was Hyeltsa, Harriet Shelton Dover. And this was her song. And it's a song about and you come in with your arms raised and you welcome the people. And we sing it four times representing the four corners of the building. As you come in, you stop at each corner and you bless the building as we come in and uh, all the corner posts. The children here, um, they made this, and they had it at Billy Frank Jr. Day at the Colcida Elementary, and it represents the salmon swimming upstream, all swimming together in unison. So when I recognize our kids for bringing that in. <coughs> I apologize, I forget some of my teaching sometimes. I should introduce myself. My name is Chichuk Glenn Gobin, and I've been asked to be the MC here today to help facilitate uh, today's event. Part of those teachings come from a longtime tribal, tribal leader, tribal chairman, Shohalem, Stan Jones. I want to ask Stan if he'd open us up with a prayer here this morning. Twelve snack man, sit a man, sit a cent a split, clomacy, stay, oh, slick lap, oh, hassia, oh, chas is the good, the cockashaxia. Quoth ti di bathban, istigwid is chas as quaquan. Twelve ti si ayos chas, ti a slikil, clobis de kake chas, clabod altabada. Amen. A women too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanking Shohalem for that prayer here this morning. The um, Stan had actually found that prayer in some of his research back in the archives, and he come across this prayer a long time ago, written down, and he wrote it down. And he brought it back home, and he gave instructions for uh, Terry and I, his daughter, to learn this prayer, and so um, we've learned it. But I've not heard Terry recite it yet, but. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask our uh, tribal chairwoman, Marie Zacchius, to come up and um, do a welcome here for each and every one of you today. Marie? Good morning. Good morning to you all. And on behalf of our ancestors, our elders, our youth, and our entire community from Tulalip, we welcome you all, tribal elected leaders, First Nations, all the representatives from the state and federal level, and to all the community members, to those Salmon Defense Committee members who are serving on behalf of this legacy of what a wonderful man, that he, the legacy he left for all of us, for the protection of our cultural ways and who we are as, as First Nations, all of us who were here first, and for the protection of the endangered salmon. I want to thank you all for the work that you do on behalf of your communities and our people. I want to thank the veterans for bringing in the colors this morning for our children who celebrated the life and legacy of Billy Frank. My grandchildren go to that school and they kept coming home every day. There was something different that they celebrated, the color of blue, and just the 
the things that they took away from their, his age, his ability. He went to jail. Did you know he went to jail, Grandma? And I said, yes, he did. And, and why, why did they put him in there just for fishing? I said, well, it wasn't a good time then. But just the wonderful teachings that were brought out and the legacy that he left for all of us is just, it makes you get goosebumps. But I just thank you all for being here this, this morning and greetings from all of us. Thank you. I don't know why I'm still hanging on to my drum. I'm, I'm not singing another song. So. Um, I want to thank each and every one also for coming in. Thank Marie for being here. Take time for her schedule to take part in this event, welcoming each and every one of you. You know, it's hard to believe it's been uh, almost four years since Billy's passing. And it seems like it was just yesterday. And when we look around, we see that um, not a lot has changed. The fight still goes on. We're still struggling to get the environment cleaned up, the waters cleaned up, have enough water. Still trying to protect the salmon. Still trying to ensure for the native people a way of life that we've had for thousands of years. And that's why it was important to pull this meeting together. You see some of the titles is about um, inspiring. You know, Billy's legacy was about inspiring. You look around the room and see all the faces. And I see all, for me, I see a lot of history of how Billy inspired people, motivated them, never lost focus on uh, what his goal was. And it wasn't necessarily his goal, but it was a goal that was handed down to him, a value that was handed down to him from his father, his mother, his ancestors, about protecting that environment, protecting that resource, always preserving it. And the responsibility that he took upon himself, knowing that his responsibility was to pass that on to the next generations. And here we are today, again, still passing that legacy on again, passing on to the next generations teaching the youth. Many of the battles that Billy fought and our past leaders have fought have been fought and they've been won. And so it's hard to talk to the next generations about the importance of those fights where they hadn't necessarily experienced it. They hadn't had to sacrifice in the same manner. So we're here today to try and instill that same value system, that same value of how important that foundational fight was and those foundational wins supporting tribal sovereignty, supporting the treaty, those things that were written and preserved in the treaty to continue on. Today, as, as Native people and the tribes in, across the nation, but in particular, we're talking Washington State, we deal a lot with economies. Economics, see the business development, the gaming operations, the hotels, the entertainments, uh, whatever, whatever economic development the tribes are getting into. But none of it would be possible without the sovereignty that tribes hold, without the treaties that recognize that sovereignty, and how we move forward. Those things preserved in the treaty that Billy fought for are the foundation of all things that we build upon. And it's important that we understand that as we go forward and we talk about moving forward in a way in the ever-changing times, the ever-changing environment, and the ever-changing economic opportunities that are out there. The ever-changing opportunities through the technology aspect, through the internet. All of the things coming forward and how we teach those next generations to protect that foundation. Everything is built off that foundation. And the decisions that we make today will affect the strength of that foundation as we go forward. So we hope that through the speakers that we have, understanding the issues that we're still facing, but understanding the history of how we got to where we are today, 
to bring that strength forward, that, that vision that Billy had, that passion that Billy had. But it wasn't just Billy. It was those past leaders. It was those past elders that fought and preserved everything that we have today. And everything is built on those values that they ensured and they instilled. And it's our job to instill that in the next generations, to come forward in a way that brings on to the, even the future generations. So we want to start out today and do things somewhat in a traditional manner. We want to call witnesses at this event. So if we were in a traditional setting, we'd call witnesses to verify the actions that take place here today. Ours was always an oral history. Everything was, nothing was written down. It was pen, handed down by word of mouth. What your great grandparents taught you, what your grandparents taught you, what your parents taught you, what your aunts and uncles and your great aunts and uncles taught you. It was, none of it was written down. It was passed down through a verbal teaching. And you lived and you breathed it. So when we call these witnesses, the witnesses are selected for specific reasons. Either you're in leadership, or you have past history, or you have an understanding, or you're the future. And you're here today to witness the events that take place, to talk about the things that you learn here today, to pass on the stories that you'll hear of the battles and the struggles and the wins, and the yet to become wins as we go forward. To talk about the teachings, to pass that on, so if somebody comes up and says, that wasn't talked about there, you as a witness can say, oh no, it was. I was there. I was there in 2018 when so-and-so stood up and shared these words. And it's passed down in that way because you feel it. When it's oral, it comes from inside here. It's not written down. It comes from inside here and the things that you feel. And so we're going to call witnesses here today to honor and respect those teachings that we have. To come forward and take part and be that witness to share what you will witness here today with the outside world or anybody that may question. You are recorded history as a witness. So we're going to call these names as we come forward here. We're going to ask you to come forward. We're going to wrap you in a blanket. And um, in your responsibility is to try and stay here through the day because at the end of the day we're going to ask you to come up and speak about what you've witnessed here today what took part and so um, we want to honor our ancestors in that way and so we're going to start out calling witnesses before we get on with any more of the work one of the first one that we're going to call is Jossie Ross ask Jossie to come forward here Jossie is Blackfoot and Suquamish. Wouldn't st keep standing there. Next one we're going to call is uh, Joseph Peters. Joseph is from Squaxin Island Tribe. Next one we're going to call is Zaslak, Cecilia Gobin. Cecilia is Talela, but she's also my daughter. <laughs>
collage could really frank I wonder where he's from Tuptalo, Sean Yanity, Chairman of the Guamish Tribe. Watatlam, J. Julius, Chairman of Lummi Nation. Shalquilam, Ray Harris, Jemena's First Nation, co-speaker for the Coast Salish Gathering, and co-chairman for First Nation Summit. We also call him our little ray of sunshine. <laughs> I want to call upon Hillary Franz to come forward and be a witness here today. Hillary is the Washington State Commissioner of Public Lands. We want to call on a couple youth. This is our future. From Nasquale to Shane, everybody talks about. And Tashina, Bird Trail, also from Nisqually. <laughs> so in our way, if there were any questions about what's taking place here today or what took place, you would go to any one of these individuals and you would ask them, and their responsibility would be to share with you what transpired here. If there was any disagreement about what took place here, you would go to these individuals and talk to them about what transpired here. And they would give their word of what, what transpired, what took place. Keeping with that oral tradition that we have. So I want to thank our witnesses here. You'll, you'll be excused, but not from the meeting. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, throughout Billy's life, he crossed many, 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 many paths and made many, many, many close friends. And he inspired many, many, many young people. One of those is a person I'm going to call up and ask to come and speak here and do our opening remarks. And um, this person was very young when she first met Billy and uh, became very close with Billy all the rest of her life, learning from his guidance, seeking out his wisdom, his tutelage, his encouragement of how to handle different things. And they often work very close together on many, many issues. She's the president of the Quinault Nation. She's the president of affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians. She holds a law degree, has held numerous positions within her tribe. She's worked within the federal government, helping on uh, different commissions and subcommittees. And so I want to call her up and ask Vaughn Sharp to come forward and share some words here with the group here this morning. Thank you. What an honor to be here this morning. I want to first of all thank the Tulalip people. Uh, Tulalip, it's such a, a blessing to come to your homelands. The beauty of the people, the, the territory, just being in this place, you could feel the, the presence of the ancestors and the dreams of future generations. Thank you. It's, it's mighty uh, heartwarming to come to Tulalip anytime, so thank you. You know, I was, I was mentioning to somebody earlier this morning that the first two years of Billy's passing, I wasn't able to even say his name publicly without feeling like I, I would just break down. The mourning and the deep loss of Billy affected us at so many levels all across the region, all across the country. So I think it's very fitting and appropriate that today, the day before spring, Spring's the signal of renewal. Tomorrow is the first day. So in that respect, I, I wore spring clothes today for the occasion, and I thought I'm going to end the day knowing that as we, this group, this body, enters the first day of spring tomorrow, there's going to be a renewal of our hearts, our minds, and our spirit around Billy's teachings, and his call to action, and the call to action and the legacy that we're going to leave this room. By the end of today, we're going to have a very clear vision of where we want to go collectively as a people, as neighbors, as partners, and that is the, the legacy of Billy. You know, when we first started thinking of how we are, are we going to honor Billy's life at the Salmon Defense, we thought Billy would want people to come together. He would want to hear from scientists. What is the best science available? And we wanted to create a single venue that once a year, if you're interested in salmon, you could come to the Billy Frank Salmon Summit and have a real time understanding of the current state of the salmon. You could hear from scientists, you could hear from policymakers, you could hear all those different things about the things that affect our price our prize salmon and so this seemed to be the the place and the venue billy was also one of wanting to bring a cross-section of people together so whether you're a scientist you're a state elected official you're a tribal leader you're a, a youth a young person this is the place that we could all come together and so in that respect we wanted to honor billy now, one of the things I really took to heart from Billy and so many of the teachings that uh, I had the honor and privilege of serving with him is once you have a clear vision of what we need to do collectively, it is hard to accept anything less. We are that seventh generation since the treaty time, and through the course of a century and a half, we've seen the environment degraded, we've seen mass pollution, We've seen just entire systems devastated. But we are that seventh generation. And we do have a clear understanding of what we need to accomplish together. 
whether it's water quality, whether it's water quantity, whether it's contending with the impacts of climate change, all those macro environmental impacts. And we've recognized across Indian country that there seems to be a leadership void around some of these issues. But tribes, whether we're fighting the Lummies, you know, at uh, Cherry Point, Quinault in uh, crude oil in Grace Harbor, the average citizen is starting to understand that the treaties are the last line of defense. And the Puyallup's right now on uh, liquid natural gas LNG. I mean, all these things where corporations are wanting to continue to exploit our resources. But tribal nations understand the timeless value. And that was one of the things when I was called upon to say a few words at, at Billy's service. The one thing that really came to mind was he is that historic visionary. He was an individual that understood the treaties, the, the spirit and the text of the treaties seven generations ago, but he was also the same person that could see seven generations into the future and, and talk about all those things that uh, we know deeply affect us. So, so uh, you know, across Indian country. So today I hope and I want to just call on everyone in this room to open up your hearts, your minds, and your spirit. Because those many ceremonies and prayers of our ancestors from when time began to today, all of those prayers are, are still with us. If you could imagine and, and just close your eyes for a minute and just imagine this land, this territory where the Tulalip people lived from when time began to now. How many prayers were offered on this land? How many ceremonies? Ceremonies for gratitude, ceremonies for continued blessings, ceremonies to honor the life of the, the animals, the salmon, the fish, our natural world. Ceremonies to thank the creator for the many blessings and the gifts. Not only the gifts of the natural world, but the gifts of each other. Because we know that through the course of time, as Native people, we've had to contend with a lot. We've had arguably the most powerful country in the world try to terminate us and destroy us. Why are we still here? We are still here because of the strength and the spirit of our ancestors. And Billy was one of those individuals that embodied the teachings of all those generations before, and he loved each and every one of us so deeply. The famous Billy hug that we all grew accustomed and, and looked forward to and felt. And you could even close your eyes and feel Billy's hug and his presence in this room. And it's those blessings that we know is <clears throat> so important <clears throat> for us to continue and to pass on to to our future generations. So to have the youth here as witnesses, that's another thing that Billy would want. He would be smiling and happy to see the young people in this room. And he would make a point to give every single young person in this room a hug, right? I mean, that's Billy. He would know their names. He would know who they are. And he would want to make sure that he had that moment and opportunity to pass on something, if not a, a hug, and some, a piece of his heart. And Billy shared that big heart, no matter where he went, who he talked to. It didn't matter if it was the President of the United States, and it didn't matter if it was you know, somebody in another part of the world. That was Billy. And so today, when we think about our treaties, and we think about the blessings and the honor of our ancestors, and we think about that clear vision we have for the future, we're unshakable. And we know that the task that is before us is one where the truth will lead us. There is no denying the truth about what we have to do. The, the course and the direction that we have to take is undoubtedly filled with battles. That's a given. I mean, this last year, if you think about the policies we've tried to advance, the battles that we've had to go through just to advance good policy, it's because there's some truth to what we have to do. And some would like to deny the truth, but we all know what the truth is, and it will lead us to that brighter future. 
And so I want to just say in honor of Billy and his life that this is the time. We cannot afford to waste another bit of our energy, another hour. At the end of today, we're going to walk out of this room with a very clear vision, a call to action, and we're going to stand on our treaties. We're going to embrace our partners and we're going to hear from the witnesses at the end of the session, each different perspective. And this is the beginning. This is the first annual Salmon Summit. And the vision that we have at Salmon Defense is that this is going to be the place where people will flock from around the world to come to understand the current state of the salmon. You're going to remember this session and this day, and you are going to say, I was at the very first Salmon Summit. Because as each year passes, and as the crisis becomes more alarming, people are going to be desperate for answers. They're going to want to know, how are we going to save the salmon? And if you look around in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, where is that work actually being done? where you could look at a cross-section of disciplines that are focused on salmon. You can't find it, but you can find it at Tulalip on this day. And you're going to find this is the beginning. Because the salmon is, as Billy said so many times, the true measure of our health and our life. And who's paying attention to that? We are. We are paying attention to that today. And when we finish our work, it's going to be the start of many other Salmon Summits. And you're going to start to see this venue and this legacy of Billy. His work is truly timeless. And Salmon Summit after Salmon Summit, we're going to see this event grow. And we're going to see the answers that the world is searching for in terms of how to contend, to adapt, to mitigate the impacts of climate change, to save the salmon, it's going to be here with us. So on behalf of the Quinault Nation, on behalf of our ancestors and our future, we are here with an open heart and open mind, and we want to join you. And we are a true partner. And let us work together to let the truth lead the way, because it will. Thank you. We have a uh, montage of some video clips of Billy, but before we play that, <clears throat> I want to ask all the tribal leaders to stand up in the room. All the tribal leaders, past and present. <laughs> I want to ask all the uh, state officials to, and First Nation leaders, First Nation leaders, stand up as well. I want to ask all the state, state leaders to stand up that are in the room. Any county leaders? If you hold a leadership in any other position which relate to salmon or the environment. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to recognize you for taking your time to be here to take part. <clears throat> now, through the Bolt decision, treaty rights were reaffirmed. They were upheld. Provisions of the treaty were upheld. And through court decisions and court documents, it came recognized that tribes were co-managers in a resource. 
co-managers with the state of Washington. I want to recognize Joe Storr. He's the acting director of Washington State Department of Fisheries. I want to thank you for being here. We called up Hillary Franz as the a witness, but she's the commissioner of public lands. These are not uh, low-level positions. These, Hillary's is an elected position, and uh, thank you for being here, Hillary, sitting with us through, throughout today. And I want to recognize that before we start this montage, because we talk about co-management and how we're going to work together to revive this resource, to manage this resource. Tribes pitch in, hold events like this, pull together, always fighting and trying to preserve this environment, protect it as we go forward, trying to rebuild it. And sometimes at best we're doing status quo, at best. We work with the state to manage the fishery for harvest. And we work with the state to work at protecting the resource. And even though it's a 50-50 partnership in that management, I would have to say 99% of the impacts come from off-reservation come from not the tribes but we freely step up and we take on that battle because of the importance of that resource we hold events like this to keep people vitalized keep them energized keep that passion alive to keep our future alive of who we are and we can focus on the native issues but the future is for each and every resident within Washington State, in this Northwest region. I don't care where you're from, how many enjoy going outdoors and seeing that blue sky, seeing those green trees, seeing clear water flowing through, seeing salmon swimming up the river, seeing salmon jumping in the salt water, seeing the killer whales out in the salt water. How many people enjoy those aspects? that many times we take for granted. And it's getting less and less. And we can have a ton of these pulling together to motivate ourselves, but if we do nothing, it's like the old saying, words without action are just words. And you'll hear Billy in one of his comments, if we can't do anything here together, then we ain't worth a damn. Those are Billy's words. And we need to take ownership of those things. We need to understand what that means. It's not somebody else's responsibility. It's each and every one of our responsibility. We need to take control of our future. We need to take control of our destiny. We need to find a way to stay focused, to heal this environment, so that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren have a future to experience the things that we built our life values on. Think about what the future holds without any of these items. Think about what it means to your children, what it means to your grandchildren. Is it more sitting in front of a screen watching something on the internet? We can look at pictures of fish and we can look at pictures of salmon, killer whales, and we can watch them animate them on TV to make them look real, but they're not real. And I say this with some passion because we're at a critical point. We can no longer just talk about it. We have to find ways to deal with it. Tribes are willing and at the table every single day. We need our co-managing partners to be as equally vigilant. We need to have legislation, laws passed that deal with these issues. Find ways to preserve what we have. Find a way to make a way for all of us.
and our environment at the same time. So think about those things as you're listening to Billy's words. Because that's where my passion comes from. That's where my understanding comes from, was those past leaders that handed these teachings down. But as a leader standing here today, or a past leader, I see it slipping away. And I really worry about what the future holds for us. So I ask you to again, think about these words that Billy's going to share with us and what they mean as we go forward in this future. They said tell a joke, but I don't have any appropriate ones. <laughs> the, uh, but I would ask that we try and fill in these tables. Now, there's a lot of empty seats up here, and uh, we're really crowded in the back. I don't know if that's traditional or not, but it'd be good if we move forward here and fill this in. Uh, anytime. <laughs> the course that we're on. We're managers and uh, we stay the course, but it takes a long time to kind of turn the ship the right way and to manage the resource, you know. And we have to do that. So we have to work together, all of us. We have to come to the table and, uh, and try to figure out what is happening here. But I I, uh, I have hope. I, I don't uh, I think uh, we will, Indian tribes will always be managers. We have to be managers. There's no other way. As we see it now and going out like not even 50 years, going out 20, 25 years, at the, at the status quo level, our, our berries are disappearing, our huckleberries. We're gatherers and we're harvesters. And our our killed cherries are disappearing. All of our medicines in the mountain are disappearing. Our salmon is disappearing. Our shellfish out there and all the the, the food chain of, of life is disappearing. And so and clean water, you know, clean water, quality and quantity of water is life. And, and, and uh, you know, people, people don't seem to, uh, I don't want to say they don't care about that, but they don't, uh, 
they, they just keep destroying the, 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 the water. Instead of protecting the water, and protecting the, the runoffs and everything else, they keep destroying it. And so that poisons our, our water system, our, our aquifers and everything. We have to be there watching all the time. We have to watch the water jets. We have to watch our, our habitat. We have to protect our habitat. We've got to, we've got to work with the timber industry and make them plant trees and harvest trees. You know, we, we want them to be here. We want the farmers to be here. You know, we want everybody to be in place. Don't move away, otherwise you don't have houses here. And this country is made out of laws. You know, but nobody enforces any laws anymore. Nobody enforces anything. They want people to volunteer. Majority of them don't, they don't want to sit at the table. They're satisfied with the status quo. They figure if they sit at the table, they're going to lose something. You know, there's nobody managing the sea lines. I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's a couple, couple uh, biologists that are, uh, that are, uh, you know, we're managing the salmon, we're managing the oysters, the scalefish, and all of that, but there's nobody managing sea lions out there, the predator of the salmon. You know, and uh, so, you know, we've got to have somebody doing that. And I'll tell you a story about farm fishing. Because my son, my two sons, my oldest son and my youngest son, fishes on the Squally River, as I told you. and. The Manchester net pens, farm pens, are across the, away from Seattle. Seattle's over here and the net pens are over here. And about 200,000 farm fish got away from these net pens. Part of them went south down toward my way, and part of them went north. They just kind of went in. Well, my boy and, and his brother were there uh, fishing and uh, they called me up one day and they said, Dad, you want, uh, you want some, uh, some Atlantic salmon, some farm fish? I said, oh, you know, we don't eat that crap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we're joking, you know. <laughs> and they said, neither does the seals or sea lions. They ate all of the squally fish, the wild fish that's coming up the squally. They wouldn't touch one of the, they're all in the net. They wouldn't touch one, one farm fish because they got, you know, they got poison in them. You know, whatever poison, I don't know what the hell poison you're talking about. You know, they just, some stuff they put in their food or what the hell ever they but the sea lions and the seals would not eat their fish. So that tells you, you know, you don't you don't eat anything that the animals don't eat. You know, that's that's our rule of law. <laughs> so there's some things we have to do. And I hope that the government will start making changes as we go on this journey, this journey of life. And, uh, uh, you know, we've been way back here and we've got, we're up to here now. Now our journey is continuing on. And, and the food that we talk about is sustainability of our life. It's the food that, that uh, that we enjoy. We have our ceremonies, and we have our marriages, and we have our children, we name our children. All of these things are part of our journey in life for our children. And so I hope the federal government starts making some changes in this management of the habitat, making changes of the, of the, the air pollution, making changes of, of uh, how the technology is used to enhance and make it better for all of us. 
We're in a time now that we have the technology to make it better. But it's not always used, but it, it's there in front of us. You know. We can start putting back what we've taken out of the earth. You know, we can start, there's technology of putting it back. And, and uh, we can do that. Now somewhere we have to make that change. It, it's not changing right now, it's a status quo. And the status quo, we don't have long. We don't have long here to, to but we have to somewhere make a transition. The federal government has to make a transition into a political will of the people. They're the ones that has to make it happen. And, and that, that's hope to all of us. So there are, there are things that, that, that are the positive side of life. When you can go up and watch your salmon spawning in the rivers, you know, and it gives you the bright, the bright lights that come on. You know, that this, this, this journey went on. It, it has a lot of good things that are happening to all of us. And, and they'll continue to happen if we all can see how further than we're looking. So. We're gonna, we're gonna be there, and uh, you know, I only got 50 more years to go, so I'll be here to do them for <laughs> Thank you. Billy does have 50 more years to go because he left that in us and we're still going and we're going to keep going. Billy got up in the morning to go to work that day. Full intentions of keeping going, keeping the fight, keeping the message moving forward. Billy was one that stood up for treaty rights. And he understood what that meant. He understood the importance of that treaty and how it recognized the sovereign authority that the tribes had. And the tribal leaders at the time recognized there were changes coming. And we all fought through the battle at different times that the tribes were forced to sign these treaties. They were a conquered nation and that. In our area, that's not true. They were negotiated treaties. The government needed something that the tribes had. They needed all this land. The tribes could see the struggle ahead. Our elders had that ability to have that vision of the struggle ahead, the challenges that were coming. They also knew that our next generations needed to be able to take, pay, take place in the world that was going to be changing as we move forward in the future. The federal government probably cut a came in at a very high cost to them and raged a big war. But they didn't have the ability, the financial strength to do that either. And so it was a negotiated treaty between two sovereigns, or many sovereigns in Washington state and the federal government, to negotiate a treaty wherein that we ceded much of our land over to the United States in exchange for certain things. One of the most important things in the Point Elliott Treaty is Article 5. It's the right to continue to hunt, fish, and gather in all usual and accustomed areas. And again, to reiterate, it was something that was never granted to us. It was something that was never put on the table at treaty times. It was reserved by the tribes. It was never put up there. And Billy understood that. 
They also ensured that there would be education, there would be housing, there would be health care. The struggles with securing the right to continue to hunt and fish, <clears throat> and still the struggles today to get adequate housing, adequate education, adequate health care. They still go on. But the most important thing that they wanted was a continuance of a way of life. To hunt, fish, and gather in all those usual and accustomed areas because the elders knew that's who we are. It's the essence of our being, who we are. It's what them brought to them to that day and what they felt that we needed to ensure our people in the future. Billy believed wholeheartedly in that. And he learned from his father the importance of that. He learned a simple way of life, of gathering on the Nisqually River and in the mountains to take what they needed, but preserve that environment. As I stated before, many people learned from Billy. We're going to call on a couple leaders that are here to ask them if they would express what salmon means to them, what sulad means to them. I'm going to ask Sean Yanity if he might share some words here. Thank you. You know, the, the salmon means a lot to our identity, not only to the tribal community, but to the state of Washington. I remember growing up as a kid seeing advertisements in magazines about the great Pacific Northwest, the salmon. It is our icon. It also represents the health of our community, the health of our, our people, a healthy river system, our healthy fish. The health of our, our people rely on it. When uh, you have a salmon run that, like the Stillaguamish, where you don't have the fish coming back, you don't have those traditions and the culture continuing. That strength that the salmon bring to our, our villages, our homes, our children, our elders, our connection to them, our connection to the water, to the ocean, and all that depend on the salmon. We're only as healthy as the as healthy as the salmon runs are. So for us, extinction isn't an option, not only for our salmon, but for our way of life and our culture and our future generations. Thank you. We're going to ask Nancy Schippentower. She, um, Grew up at Frank's Landing, was there on the Puyallup River. Her mother was very active in all of these things. Talk about, ask her to speak about what's important to her in this struggle. Good morning. My name is Wakeable, Nancy Schippentower. My mother is Janet McLeod, Yetzi Blue from, from here. Um, I grew up on the Nisqually River watching uh, my dad and my uncles and, and our parents go fishing. And um, they fished all year round. So it was great to go down there. They'd be canning fish, getting fish ready. They'd be selling it. And most important, they'd be smoking it to put it away for the winter. Salmon is our DNA. My grandpa's sitting it. Their house was built on a water break. I have a, it just, I can just remember this place. 
And there was a little window. My grandpa's really old. He'd sit out the window and look out the window. He goes, years ago there were salmon. He goes, you could walk across the backs of them. That's how much salmon we, we had. He goes, but we took just what we needed because we knew, we knew the salmon needed to live. He goes, now today, these white men have saners out in our river, gill nets out there, and just, just taking them by the millions. He says, salmon's in our DNA. It's, it's who we are. It's our spirit. It, it gives us that energy that we need. And he goes, one day, granddaughter, that's going to be gone. And I don't know what's going to happen. I have a little granddaughter. She's not little no more. But um, she would help me smoke fish. And I explained him about the salmon. We used every part of that salmon. We never threw nothing away. And we'd smoke it. We cooked the fish heads. Cooked the backbone. We we used it all. And that's why when we honor it during the salmon ceremony, we're thanking that salmon for the life that it enriched us with. It's like a funeral for salmon. It's really sad because today some people are not doing that. They're not honoring that. To them it's a big show. When we go when we go fishing, we go out. My dad and and my siblings would all be in our boat. We lay tobacco down. We lay it, some of the salmon down, smoke salmon, and we pray for our brothers and sisters in the water. Because that's how important salmon is to us. When the salmon cease to exist, we cease to exist. When people get sick during the winter, they don't know what's wrong with them. You say, you need, you need to eat some salmon. You're from here. Oh, I don't like salmon. Make yourself eat that salmon. It's better than McDonald's. Better than Country Kitchen. It's a heartbeat of our people. The kids need to remember that. Eat that salmon when it comes to you. When Aller offers it to you, take it. And make sure you eat it. One thing, too, I notice is when the salmon are smaller now. I remember lifting one up like this, but they're smaller now. They're getting smaller. This waterway is not for scientists to experiment in our water with their Atlantic salmon or the strange things they're bringing over here because it hurts our salmon. It hurts our livelihood. It hurts all these young kids that are coming in. It's good that we have people like John McCor and our native people rising up because we need them. We need them in those those houses. We need them to hit that table and say, we've had enough. Pull your fishermen out. The sad thing is, is we're not greedy like they are. We just want our salmon to survive so that we will have a future. That grandfather I talked about, he's Willie Frank. He's always sitting down. Oh, granddaughter, he'd say. Sad day today. They took my sons to jail. What am I going to do? And that's why he talked. He talked like that. He tried to teach us things. And we'd listen. Because he was old. I don't know, he was always old all my life. He looked the same. But he was a great grandfather. He raised a great son. And as you can see, his son is growing up like him. I'd like to introduce my granddaughters. Can I really quick? 
these Danae and Mishka. These are my granddaughters. And my nephew, Hanford McLeod, back there, he likes kids. He has them with him all the time. Thank you. You know, that uh, recognition of family is part of that value of the salmon. I was in um, Chilliwack. We're there to testify on behalf of the uh, Salish Sea for the pipeline that was coming down. And had the opportunity to go out on the river and watch the people fishing on the river. And as we were going out there, it's, it's flat pouring buckets. We're in this open skiff. And I got this uptown overcoat on, and, and I'm trying to stay warm, kind of slack pants or something on. And, but I wanted to go out on the water. I wanted to be out on the water. I wanted to see this. And they were seining in the river for chum salmon. And it reminded me so much of the values that we have when we would fish growing up as a family. Being out there on the beach together. And I'd see these boats going up and it'd be whole families on the boat traveling up. It'd be whole, whole families on the river bank, on the river bars, setting the net out, pulling it back in. Doing it all together as family. So when Nancy recognizes her granddaughters as family, it's part of passing on that value, that importance of doing those things together, sharing those things that you're taught. And sometimes as a young person, you don't recognize the things that you're learning when the elders talk about these things until you start to get older and those values really start to be formed. And it really does come back to say, hey, I was there. I heard that before. I get how that connection comes now. I see how I fit in this picture. I see what the future holds. So I thank Nancy for that instant memory that you brought back of doing that. And for me, and I often hear my elders, those that I grew up fishing with on the beach, we used to beach sail a lot. They'd say the best days of our lives when we used to fish on the beach as family. We'd camp on the beach and we'd stay there all summer long. Those were the best days. Yeah, it's really nice today, it's really comfortable. Yeah, we don't have to uh, worry as much, but those were still the best days, the simplest days. We want you young people to feel that same way. We want you to experience those things of being out in nature and doing these things together. Nourish that value. Nourish those things that have been passed down. <clears throat> 